I'm author Amy Shannon. Uh, recently, I wrote a short story called The Forsaken. It's available in digital and on Kindle Bello right now. Um, but it was the setting was the um, the, the village of Balsam's Spa, uh, and more like the cemetery of Balsam's Spa. And um, as I was doing research, because I wanted to make sure that my um, historical references were correct, because my main character, Dorothy, in honor of my grandmother, um, was a historian. Um, and, you know, I always told, uh, told her well, she passed away uh, last year and she was 101 and I told her she was historical. So I <laughs> put that in my story. But anyways, as I was doing research, um, I got caught up in it. It was like, I was learning so much and I love to learn and I love to read. And sometimes, you know, I have some physical disabilities. I don't always see straight. I don't always walk straight. Sometimes I don't even walk at all. But anyways, uh, and I also have rheumatoid arthritis, which does not help me with with with, with my writing. Um, so I just kept doing research and taking notes. And I didn't want my book to sound like a textbook. You know, you get enough of that textbook-ish stuff, you know, in academics. And um because I really believe, and it was something that I didn't think about until I started putting this book together, that every life and every death tells a story. And I didn't want my book just to be about the historical prominent businessmen or um, just about the uh, men who sold the land that makes up what was once called Ballstown to Reverend Eliphalet uh, Ball. And I hope I am pronouncing his name right because I've been calling him that. Um, and as I learned more about him, I knew that it was called Ballstown. And it's Balls, B-A-L-L-S hyphen town. Uh, a lot of compound words back then were, um, they hyphenated a um, even the word tomorrow, it would be T-O and then dash morrow. Um, so you may see that in a lot of older books. I also found a lot of um, books that were, they're not in print, they're written in the 1800s or even before that. Um, and I was able to, uh, one of the books that I was able to purchase, the first edition, because I could afford it, it wasn't that expensive, but just the fact that I have it, and I also have it in digital, um, some books that uh, are still available um, that you can go on Amazon and buy, and I, I've done that. Um, I've, you know, um, a man named Nathaniel um, Sylvester Barrett, um, he just, uh, he wrote a lot of historical books um, at the time, and it was in the 1800s. Um, there are other authors, uh, current, and then some that were in the 1900, early 1900s. Um, and I read all of, all of that, all of those books. And I actually, um, found many that were, you know, they're not in print anymore, but there's a digital version of those books. And, um, so I was able to download them um, in a way that make uh, sense. And I added them to my business website, which has a couple pages that are dedicated to my writing work. And one is dedicated to the history of Paulson Spa and this book that I'm discussing right now. Um, this book will be released on March 21st, 2024. And that is the 217th um, anniversary of the incorporation of Balsam Spa, um, which is in upstate New York. Um, one thing I I wanted to, this was something that oh, I was telling my, my boys, um, 
this is going to make me famous in Basel's Ball. Maybe this is the book that will make Amy Shannon famous. I don't care about fame and fortune. Heck, I'm just glad I have my own room finally. Anyway, that's a story for uh, never. Anyways, so when I was putting the book together, I wanted to be able to not just tell the stories about, you know, the prominent businessmen um, or, you know, the influential men that um, were part of Boston. Um, I did a lot of research on Reverend Ball. Um, he bought the land from the McDonald brothers who were squatting on Long Lake, um, which is now Balsam Lake. Um, and the um, a lot of the references said, oh yes, he bought it for the price of a bottle of rum. Um, and some say, oh yeah, he gave them rum and then there you go, you have the land. But no, it was um, the 10 shillings, which was the equivalent of what it costs to buy a bottle of rum. And I don't know if that would be the good kind or I don't know. Anyways, so I visited um, Reverend Ball, well, his site and his wife's site. And I was pleased to see how their headstones had been restored, um, pearly white almost, you know. Um, there are a lot of grave sites in Briggs Cemetery and other cemeteries where the stones are so worn um, or overcome and you, you just can't read them. Um, but when I was writing this book, I, you know, I wanted to tell the story of the people, the settlers, the not just the pioneers, but their wives, their children, their lives. What did they do? Um, many um, had multiple jobs, you know. Um, some may have been uh, part of the board of trustees when they incorporated um, the village of Balsam Spa. Um, some were just like store owners or business owners, but they were also part of the, their church. Um, they did a lot of, um, some were in competition. Oh, his hotel is bigger than mine, so I have to buy more land. But there were a lot of men that were very prominent and they were also kind and generous a lot of the early pioneers donated parcels of their land to help build roads um, schools buildings um, cemeteries the farmers donated parcels of their land um, which eventually created different cemeteries um, in uh, ballstown um, now ballstown um, was split into two towns, um, the town of Boston and the town of Milton. And Boston Spa is somewhere kind of in between there. And it bordered, there's part of Boston Spa, it's in the village. Um, and then part is in the town of Milton, part is in the town of Boston. Um, and there's a lot of information for that. Um, so I hope my book interests you. There's photographs um, that I've um, I had my son take for me. Some were my own personal photographs. Some were um, where, wherever I could find photographs of the um, of people that lived in this area, and I'm telling their story. Um, I would include them in the book. I do have a lot of research that's not in the book, and I am thinking about doing biographical sketches with that information, starting with some of the wives of the prominent men in the town, because where there's a great man, there's usually a woman beside him. So the only thing I wanted to do is in, in introducing this book and promoting it was to kind of tell what I was thinking about, but also... Um, the prologue in the book I wanted to read, I was inspired while I was standing over the, the um, 
burial site of Reverend Eliphalet Ball and his wife. And I thought, what would he, if I could say, excuse me, could you write a prologue or write something in my book? What would he say? And after doing all this research, I thought about it and I'm like, yeah. So I'm not saying that Reverend Ball came to me in my room or in a vision and said, here, this, write this down. You know, um, you could be a real ghost writer. Sorry. Uh, but I was just thinking about what we, what would he say? So I'm going to share the prologue with you. And I hope that um, when the time comes that you purchase the book um, and enjoy it as much as I enjoyed writing it. This is my first historical nonfiction book. The only nonfiction book that I ever wrote before was a workbook. And this is definitely known. Um, so I am very proud of how this came out. So I'm just going to read the prologue. Um, prologue by the late Reverend Eliphalet Ball. This is my town, Ball's Town. I bought it, but a town should not be just owned by one man. It should be a community. If you do not know, I am Reverend Eliphalet Ball. I was born in 1722, and I died in 1797. It may seem odd that I'm telling my story, the story, but I am still here. My body may be underground, buried in Briggs Cemetery on Brookline Road, but my spirit has never left. There have been rumors that General George Washington was my third cousin, that my father was related to George Washington's mother. I only heard the stories, but whether the story is true or not, I do know what a virtuous man he was. He was full of energy, courage, and he was a scholar, and of course, he was a Christian man. Yes, I still see him now and then, but since he became the first president of the United States when the war was over, and though he did not want it at first, he still believes that he is a great man and maybe better than us spirits that were only settlers who believed in God or the minerals that the spring wildly, uh, the spring wildly through the spa cities. We are all important, but what is most important is humans living their lives, taking care of their families, how they live, not necessarily who they were in society, but who they were as people. I want my story told. And how, even though I have may, may have been gone a long time ago, I was and always will be here. One of the interesting parts of my story is that I never settled, truly settled, anywhere until after death. Yet I am still here, looking over, keeping watch, seeing destruction, and what is called progress. Somehow, from its beginning to its current states, I can see all. I do not have to be all. And I can see a part of history that I was not involved in. In life, I was a God-fearing man. Now, as a spirit, I feel I am still doing God's work. He has the world, and I have my town. So, this has been Amy Shannon, just giving you a bit of information about my new book, Ball's Town. And if you're interested in learning more about the other books that um, I have, uh, on my website about um, that I used from my research um, and some were just scanned copies of the original book um, you can find them at my at, uh, website essenceenterprises.us.com and then you just look for the history of Ballstown.